moving? Let's test it out. This is an olive oil heavy class. Let's start slowly by drilling that hole. Watch my eyebrow. I just spritz it all day. Oh! We placed the order for click and collect. We are done. That was easy. OK, we're all set. Right, thank you. Thanks, guys. We're off to see a film in the car. <laughs> I don't know what I'm tasting right now. It's just amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we're in. <laughs> I haven't gone shopping in so long. Yeah, we're good. I miss, love all you guys. The world looks very different this New Year's Eve. A billion people will be vaccinated in 2021. This is a worldwide effort. Until the world is vaccinated, no one is vaccinated. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Google Marketing Livestream. We have registrants from nearly every country in the world, from Japan to Mexico to France to Australia to Germany to China, the UK, and many, many others. This event is something I always look forward to, and that has never been more true than it is this year. Can you believe it's been two years since we last came together? And I've got to be honest, I've really, really missed this. And meeting virtually does have some advantages. I'm guessing we may have more people attending in sweatpants and slippers, but whatever you're wearing and wherever you're joining us from, I couldn't be happier that we are back. The number of you joining this event during a time that's been difficult for everyone and devastating for far too many is truly encouraging. So for those of you who have made the time to join us, thank you. Thank you for making it safer and easier for people to find the goods they need to continue living their lives. Thank you for keeping pace with a step change in digital adoption by businesses and obviously consumers. And thank you for pivoting, innovating, and persevering. And while there are glimmers of hope from vaccine rollout to employment numbers, we know many around the world continue to face incredible challenges with COVID. Many businesses and some entire sectors are still struggling. And of course, there are people who've had a more difficult time because of their identities, their health, or their financial circumstances. There's no question that we're living through a time of extremes. We're facing tougher challenges than ever, but it's also possible to have a deeper impact than ever because we have a real opportunity to be helpful to more people, more businesses, and more partners. Hundreds of thousands of businesses of every size have shared with us the unique difficulties they're facing. And at Google, our top priority is to help you navigate this once-in-a-lifetime digitization moment. As the pandemic took hold, Google's teams around the world worked to do just this. I was humbled to see that we actually had more interactions with partners during the pandemic than in a normal year. The teams delivered 70,000-plus custom analysis using Google Data responded to 20% more customer emails and calls than normal, and connected with customers via 10% more customer meetings than during a normal year. We do all this so that you can be ready for what's next. Let me share a couple of quick examples. The disrupted travel industry faced the crisis of canceled flights, car rentals, and vacations that spurred us to create new tools and solutions to help our partners in travel and beyond understand and keep pace with changing trends and consumer demands. We introduced new ways for hotel advertisers to shift the risk from their balance sheet to ours. So now if someone makes a reservation using Google hotel ads and then cancels for any reason, the hotel doesn't pay. Global quarantines also forced the retail sector to completely rethink how to serve their customers. In the US, we saw 10 years worth of e-commerce growth in just three months. As the pandemic took hold, we saw we could help businesses by arming them with powerful commercial data. And we wanted to share these insights to help business navigate these wild swings in demand. So awesome engineers doubled down on customer insight products and quickly launched solutions like our publicly available rising retail categories tool to spot breakout opportunities. And while the pace of recovery varies across the globe, 
We can use data from countries who are further along to inform and support those that are still in the midst of challenge. It's the closest we can get to using the knowledge of the future to inform the present, at least outside of Google X. So we'll continue to invest to help give businesses like all of yours the power to pivot quickly and prepare for what's next. It's why we've got such an exciting agenda inspired by your feedback and where we'll share some amazing technology and products to help you and your businesses adapt in three big areas. On privacy, my friend and colleague, Jerry Dishler, our VP and GM for our full advertising suite, will share our vision for the ads product roadmap and our point of view on building for a privacy safe world. We're going all in on aggregation, anonymization, on-device processing, and other privacy preserving technologies that will deliver advertising performance while also protecting people. On measurement, Vidya Srinivasan, our VP and GM of ads buying, analytics and measurement will share new ways to future-proof your business with first-party data and automated marketing insights. You can start preparing now for the future without cookies. And on the future of commerce, Bill Reddy, our president for commerce and his team will share what's in store for shoppers and merchants, a future where your brand is at the heart of the shopping experience and customer loyalty is a top priority. All this work is the result from many, many teams and many Googlers working to help you drive results for today and tomorrow, because you don't have to be able to see the future to be ready for it. So sit back and welcome again to Google Marketing Livestream. Hi, and thanks for joining us at Google Marketing Livestream from around the world. A special hello to those of you streaming directly in the Google Ads app. On behalf of everyone at Google, we hope you've been staying safe during this difficult year and taking care of yourselves and the ones you love. We last met in person in 2019 and connected virtually in 2020 with global programs like Ads on Air and Advertising Week, along with various roundtables that my team and I really enjoyed hosting. And one thing that's become clear during a period of profound and prolonged uncertainty is that all of our jobs have become more difficult. The good news is it's possible to tackle today's challenges and be ready for tomorrow's opportunities together. My team's purpose is finding places to add the most value for marketers and agencies. Thanks to your ideas, insights, and suggestions, we completely revamped our 2020 product roadmap. We sprinted to build products to drive results and build resilience for your business during a turbulent time. For example, the Insights page in Google Ads gives you custom insights specific to your business to help you unlock new opportunities. It rolled out to all advertisers around the world earlier this year. Curbside pickup for local inventory ads helps you better and more safely connect local shoppers with the products they need. We enabled booking for local services ads to help people connect with trustworthy professionals in their own neighborhoods, all backed by the Google Guarantee. We also unveiled our plans for Performance Max campaigns, a new way for all advertisers to buy Google ads from a single campaign across YouTube, Display, Search, Discover, Gmail, and Maps. This new campaign complements your search campaigns. It also helps you maximize performance in three key ways. First, it helps you find more converting customers across all of Google's ad inventory without having to manage multiple campaigns. Second, it drives the best performance Google can deliver against the goals that matter the most to you. And early testers thought it should be easier to import customer data to consider these goals. So we've heard your feedback you'll soon see that in your campaigns. And third, you can get richer insights into automation and how it's working for your business. We've increased transparency, and that's based on invaluable feedback from many of you. Starting today, given the positive results from early testers, we're expanding the Performance Max beta to thousands of additional advertisers globally. And look out for that full launch later this year. 
As we built these tools to support your growth and recovery, we've heard so many stories of your ingenuity and resolve. They're good reminders of other big transformative changes in how businesses reach customers as technology has expanded all over the world. Broadband triggered the internet's first growth phase by bringing the world online. Next came mobile, which democratized the internet and made it possible for marketers to reach their customers anywhere at any time, whether they were at home or away. And now the pandemic. This public health crisis has had negative consequences around the world, and we've taken a lot of our behaviors online to cope and adapt. It's the third transformative event to fundamentally shift how people in the physical world interact with the digital world. It's been a challenging time, yet people still have found ways to remain optimistic. That spirit is reflected in what people are looking for on Google. Just to give you a few examples, searches with the words ideas for beginners grew by over 100%, and searches for how to invest have grown by over 70%. People are expressing themselves in new ways. They're thinking about their future in new ways. There are more moments to connect with consumers today than there ever have been before. And as the world recovers, we have more opportunities than ever to deliver what people are looking for. Amid all that change, privacy continues to be a top priority for Google across every one of our consumer products and services and every one of our advertising products. When you use our products, you trust us with your data, and it's our responsibility to protect and respect it. We never sell your personal information. We never use sensitive information for ads, things like health, race, religion, or sexual orientation. We never use the content you create and store in apps like Drive, Gmail, and Photos for any ads purposes. These principles govern our ads business and they will never change. But we all need to prioritize privacy with much greater urgency. For years, our industry relied on an implied contract with internet users that went something like this. In exchange for your personal data that let advertisers show them relevant advertising, people would receive free access to content. However, today, 81% of people say that the potential risks they face because of data collection outweigh the benefits. They are increasingly concerned about how they're being tracked when traveling across the internet. We've seen this in what people are searching for on Google, and we've seen it in how privacy controls across our products are being used. People are no longer satisfied with the old way of doing things. They want more assurance that the bargain is working in their favor. They value their privacy more, and we are losing their trust. Our industry needs to take bold action to regain that trust. Being reactive is just not a sustainable approach. Our goal at Google is the same as it's always been, to support a free and open internet while also protecting user privacy. But we know we have more to do to achieve that goal. That's why earlier this year, we announced that once third-party cookies are phased out, we will not build alternative identifiers to track individuals as they browse across the web and we won't use those identifiers in our product. Third-party cookies and other proposed identifiers that some in the industry are advocating for do not meet the rising expectations consumers have when it comes to privacy. They will not stand up to rapidly evolving regulatory restrictions. They simply cannot be relied on in the long term. We can build a privacy-safe, ad-funded internet together. It's possible to help you deliver business results while still dramatically improving privacy. Successfully transitioning to a world without cookies is going to require three things from our industry. First, building great relationships with your customers has always been critical to a successful business. In today's privacy-safe world, it's more important than ever. Our industry needs to properly use consented first-party data. That starts by building deep engagement with your customers. The sooner, the better. Next, automation and machine learning make forward-looking predictive marketing possible by helping you identify key patterns and trends. With the right type of automation, effective privacy-safe ad selection and measurement are possible. These technologies can help provide visibility in cases where data or signals may be limited. 
So use machine learning and automated solutions whenever they're available. The final step is to commit to new technologies that preserve privacy. Chrome's Privacy Sandbox is an open source initiative to develop new technologies centered on advances in anonymization, on-device processing, and other privacy techniques. It's truly a place for everyone where anyone can submit proposals and run experiments. These technologies offer sustainable solutions for key digital advertising use cases, from interest-based ads to measurement and much more. We believe the Privacy Sandbox is the right way forward for our industry. We'll be using these APIs for our own ads and measurement products, just like everyone else, and we will not build any back doors for ourselves. Anyone can get involved in shaping these proposals. Protecting privacy can and should be a priority for everyone. The world of privacy has already changed and the time to act is now. We at Google are all in on this. The path is clear to dramatically improve privacy that enables advertisers to deliver business results today, tomorrow, and in the years ahead. We're in a new era with privacy at the forefront. My team's strategy is based in that core reality, and you're going to be hearing all about it today. We're building towards the future to help you be ready for what comes next. My entire team is working to build the best place for businesses and merchants of all sizes to connect with potential customers. If you sell products with us, we want to move beyond being a direct response channel. Our vision is to connect buyers and sellers at scale in a way that's open to the entire ecosystem. For video, we're making YouTube a destination with experiences that inspire both discovery and action where businesses can win new customers online and in person. For Google Ads specifically, we remain committed to a future where you can use automation to reach your potential as quickly and efficiently as possible. And when it comes to measurement, we are working to ensure you can get the insights you need in a privacy safe way. In all of these areas, we're ready to partner with you to invent the future together. To make every marketing dollar count, you need to understand consumer behavior. And in today's privacy environment, users expect more control over how their data is used and collected. I've talked to many of you, and I know just how daunting it seems to make this fundamental shift away from cookies and other identifiers. The reality is our industry is changing, and right now is the time to do the hard work of preserving the future of measurement. A few key steps can help set you up for the future. First, build your measurement foundation on first-party data. Next, enable users to make choices about their data. And finally, keep reporting actionable and fill in the gaps with model data. We've been listening to your feedback and we will continue to work with you to help preserve privacy while also getting the essential insights you need to be ready for what's next. To start, your measurement strategy needs a clear plan for collecting and using consented first-party data. Those direct relationships with your customers should be the basis of your marketing. This all starts with the foundation of site-wide tagging that gives you the data you need to deliver privacy-safe measurement. The right approach to tagging enables you to both observe more conversions and model more insights from those conversions. We are also introducing a new way to measure conversions even when cookies are not available. These enhanced conversions work by allowing your tags to use consented, hashed, first-party data like email addresses, from wherever your conversions are recorded. This gives you a more complete view of how your ads are performing on Google Media. It also improves conversion modeling and even works across devices for a more complete view of your user behavior. Separate from measurement, insights from your first-party data can also help you build a more future-proofed audience strategy. Customer Match can help you deliver relevant experiences and deepen your relationship with your customers. And your customers can in turn deepen their connection with your brand while making choices about their data. Because of the importance of that connection, we are now making Customer Match available for nearly all advertisers to use. After meeting a couple of simple requirements, advertisers of all sizes can start reaching people with personalized as well as privacy safe ads. Next, we're building new tools for you that protect users' privacy. Last year, we introduced Consent Mode, 
This feature provides new tag settings to customize how Google Tags behave before and after users make their cookie consent decisions. For those who say no, the relevant Google Tags will adjust how they behave. For example, not using cookies when permission has not been granted. This helps you both respect users' choices and more effectively measure performance when users do opt-in. Of course, when users opt out of cookies, there will be gaps in your reporting. That's why we've now released conversion modeling through consent mode to help close these gaps and give you more detailed conversion insights. These model conversions will help you optimize your campaigns more effectively and achieve better business results. To make it as easy as possible for you to respect people's choices about their data, we are adding new consent capabilities to Tag Manager. Businesses that already use a consent management solution on their website can integrate directly with Tag Manager without having to edit any website code. Tag Manager will allow Tag developers to integrate directly with consent mode. You can easily see which of your tags already incorporate consent. And you can control tag behavior based on consent without having to make complicated edits to your tagging setup. You can enable these new capabilities in your Tag Manager settings today. Machine learning and automation can step in to deliver insights and performance from the consented data that you have. And that's in addition to modeling conversions. For example, last year we unveiled the new Google Analytics, which features automated marketing insights. And today we're announcing that we are extending Google's best-in-class modeling capabilities to behavioral reporting in analytics. Now you can continue generating powerful insights about the complete customer journey, even when cookies are not available. And for when you have identifiers from your first party data readily available, we are working on new ways to help you connect user journeys across your site and app in a privacy safe manner. This combo of consented and model data is only useful if you can use it to get straightforward, actionable reporting. What insights about your media do you need to make the right decisions? We've created a new advertiser experience in Google Analytics, which presents deeper insights into your campaign performance. In this experience, you can see cross-channel performance, advertising metrics, and recommendations, all visible at a glance. You can compare attribution models too. Ultimately, this will help you make better cross-channel decisions about your media budgets based on site and app performance. Additionally, you can soon get a more complete picture of the performance of your Google Ads with improved attribution reporting. In addition to search and shopping campaigns, touch points from Display and YouTube will soon be included in all attribution models, including data-driven attribution. Here's another first. We'll be integrating in-app conversions for those touch points as well. This means your business can properly value the impact of all your Google Ads including search, shopping, display, and YouTube. And of course, data-driven attribution will continue to work on conversion imported from analytics. Privacy-safe measurement starts with giving users choices about their data and then respecting those choices. From there, you can still get insights you need with modeled information created with machine learning. With that in place, you're now ready to make the right decisions, even in the world without cookies. This is a journey toward improved measurement that we are making together. To summarize, the future is based on first party, the future is consented, and the future is modeled. Great measurement leads to great performance, especially when you use your insights to power automation. Automation is so much more than bidding. You can now solve top challenges with a strong partnership between your business intelligence and Google Ads. It's the best way to achieve your maximum potential as quickly and efficiently as possible. Your marketing know-how combined with automation delivers performance and unlocks opportunities. And that's always with the control you need to recover and grow, particularly in turbulent times. Let's start with performance. Automation drives results, especially when you feed it the right information about the value of your ads. You can follow a simple formula that for growth that begins with a deep understanding of value. It's as straightforward as using responsive search ads with broad match and smart bidding. 
Responsive search ads combines your creativity with the power of Google's machine learning to help you deliver relevant, valuable ads. Broadmatch helps you find high-performing queries and emerging trends. And Smart Bidding optimizes bids in real time to hit your performance goals, even as query volume and conversion value change. Over 80% of you are now using automated bidding to drive results for your business. With automation, we're now automatically assembling your creative, finding more queries that perform with broad match, and adjusting your bids to deliver the right creative at the right price for each query. They're better together. You can also use automation to deliver a great experience that drives engagement. When you provide the right components, the right person can see the right ad at the right time. Create at least one excellent responsive search ad and enable four ad extensions. That's what it takes to give the machine the flexibility it needs to deliver on the promise of automation. You tell your story with the right ad components, then the right parts of that story are chosen automatically for every single context in real time. And it's now even easier to serve up great ad extensions. Image extensions are now out of beta and available to advertisers globally. Flexible creative options can drive performance for you beyond search. For video action campaigns and discovery ads, you'll be able to connect your merchant center feed and show your top sellers alongside your ad. Use it to harness the power of video and images to drive product discovery for your full catalog across YouTube, Discover, Gmail, Google Play, and apps. In addition to performance, automated insights enable you to stay forward-looking and uncover opportunities across geographies. We recently introduced the Insights page globally in Google Ads to make it easy for you to explore trends tailored to your business. This page contains deep insights about changing query trends, information we hadn't shared directly with you before. Demand forecasts will be rolling out in the coming weeks to predict relevant changes to search behavior over the next 90 days. Use these insights to prepare your campaigns, inventory, and more for opportunities that are heading your way. Automation also creates opportunities for your campaigns themselves. Specifically, Optimization score helps you stay on top of all available recommendations. And even as user behavior evolves, this score helps you meet your objectives, whether those are growth or efficiency-based. Even keyword match types, the foundation of search ads, have evolved based on changing search behavior. There have been multiple updates to keywords this year. Phrase match reaches more of the right searches, while broad match has been overhauled to deliver more relevant searches by incorporating signals like landing pages, keywords in your ad group, and more. We improved the understanding of the themes of search to better match them to the right ad groups and ads. And an exact match keyword that is identical to a query is now always preferred as long as it's eligible to match, so you have more control. The Berlin-based MyToys group switched many of their keywords to broad match and paired them with smart bidding. This new investment in automation led to 40% more revenue at a similar ROAS to past performance. Finally, you also need to steer automation and to have confidence that it's doing what you want it to do. For example, you've told us that you want transparency into automated campaigns like Performance Max. You can understand how all of that automation is delivering results for you over on the Insights page. You'll see what's driving performance changes, the types of consumers who are converting, and which audiences your assets are most resonating. This visibility enables you to take control of what needs your attention. You want to trust automation to do the right things for your campaigns. Communicating the right information to Google Ads is the best way to do that. This starts with the quality of your leads or sales, including sales that can happen offline. You can tell the system when a period of time shouldn't be part of your conversion history for whatever reason. Other inputs enable you to take control of your brand, like the ability to pin your headlines or descriptions in responsive search ads. Even negative keywords exist for you to tell us what searches you don't want to appear on. Automation is built with you in mind and updated continuously to improve your performance. Your marketing expertise combined with the power of Google's machine learning can change the course of your business and supercharge your recovery to be ready for what's next.
We look forward to building for the future of your business and our industry together. What does that look like? Consider the new technologies being developed in the privacy sandbox. Base your measurement and audience strategies on consented first-party data. Achieve your potential as quickly and efficiently as possible with automation. Please keep giving us your insights and feedback, and we'll do the same. For example, you'll soon see tailored insights and guidance specific to your account in Google Ads directly. And thank you again to everyone tuning into this live stream from the Google Ads app. Starting today, you can look for in-stream education content to help you learn about the features you're using right while you're using them. We look forward to partnering with your businesses to both drive results, even through continued uncertainty, and to build long-term resilience. This is a period of immense transformation, both for digital marketing and for privacy overall. We found a way to thrive after the big shifts triggered by broadband and mobile. Let's do it again. There's tremendous opportunity ahead of us. We're here to help you succeed, and we look forward to a brighter future together. We've all seen firsthand how the past year has sped the shift to online shopping in every order of groceries or hunt for that at home, well, everything. Our Google data reflects that. In the fourth quarter of 2020, the year-over-year -year growth rate in retail searches was more than three times the rate we had seen in the same period in 2019, driven in part by COVID. People shop across Google billions of times each day for everything from fitness equipment to outdoor furniture. While we've been working toward omni-channel experiences for years, the pandemic threw into stark relief the fact that consumer needs and expectations change in a flash. And the right channel is the one that works for the customer. It goes beyond visiting websites over storefronts. Curbside pickup searches spiked 3,000% year over year at the beginning of the pandemic. Websites are joining forces with storefronts. People even tune into YouTube to help them decide what to buy. 70% of shoppers surveyed said they bought from a brand after seeing it on YouTube. Our shopping habits are changing. At the core of it all is choice. Shoppers increasingly want more options. Online, people can discover new brands and decide on the best choice, all in a couple of clicks. The surge in e-commerce brings undeniable opportunities, but the changing unpredictable needs of shoppers present challenges for businesses to connect. Think of Google as the connector between you and your evolving customer base. We can take those billions of shopping sessions and turn them into real chances for you to meet your customers and their needs. Shoppers want choice, but they also need help finding what they're looking for. We can help them by helping businesses stand out and tell their stories. That's why we've continued to invest in and build towards an open ecosystem where all merchants can succeed, from the world's largest retailers to the mom and pop shop down your street. Last year alone, our merchant community grew over 80%, with significant growth in small and medium-sized businesses, and that's just the beginning. We're excited to be partnering closely with Shopify to make it easier for all merchants to get discovered across Google surfaces, helping them meet shoppers in the right decision-making moments across their journey. To make this possible, we're launching a seamless integration between Google and Shopify, which simplifies getting product inventory live as well as enables shop pay for Shopify merchants as a payment option across Google surfaces. I want to welcome Harley from Shopify to share more about our work together to ensure more merchants can get discovered on Google. Thank you, Bill. Like you said, we are building a version of commerce where all merchants can succeed. This means leveling the playing field and giving every independent business the same opportunity to reach customers. Shopify democratizes commerce for independent businesses and entrepreneurs in the same way Google has democratized access to information. Most recently, we extended our collaboration by making the onboarding frictionless and faster for merchants. And now we're looking towards what's next, helping merchants get discovered across Google while enabling the best commerce experience for both users and merchants. Today, we're announcing that we're bringing ShopPay one of the fastest and most secure checkouts on the internet to anyone buying from Shopify merchants on Google. Last year, customers placed more than 137 million orders on ShopPay. Merchants love ShopPay too, because its conversion rate is almost twice as high as a typical checkout. 
And now, even more merchants and their customers can experience the combined magic of Shopify and Google. Merchants like Anna, the founder of Xena Workwear. Working as an engineer in manufacturing, I was frustrated with my bulky safety boots. They were designed for men and made it impossible to feel confident. I founded Xena Workwear to develop stylish safety shoes and functional apparel that empower women in demanding industries. Creating a store in Shopify really helped me connect directly with our customers and hear their honest feedback. Since our target audience is very niche, we had to be smart with marketing spend. Google Shopping campaigns were just perfect. They allowed us to visually show our beautiful products to women who are ready to buy. Google's integration with Shopify made it really easy to get started. Just a few clicks were needed to install the Google channel, sync our product feed, and go live. Shopping campaigns have been very successful. Ads delivered up to eight times the return on investment and more than 90% of sales came from new customers who have never heard of us before. I'm really excited about the possibilities. We will be scaling our Google investment to help more women around the world discover Xena Workwear. This is just one of many developments in how we're building for the future of shopping. Three core principles are the foundation of our product development. First, crafting and sharing the open ecosystem. This means bringing the industry along with us with every new innovation so we can share our progress and remain the best possible partners to you. Second, Knowing the shopper is always right. It may sound cliche, but it's endured for a reason. We strive to help you build the best consumer experience from discovery to checkout. Finally, letting businesses focus on their business. We're always working to update and distribute insights and trends and provide easy, seamless setup processes so you can focus on what matters. No matter where you are in your journey, Google is here to help your business be ready for whatever comes next. Today, shopping is something we are always doing, whether it's conscious or not. In line at the pharmacist scrolling through my Discover feed, I came across an Architectural Digest article on the best throw pillow brands. I subconsciously kept the list in my head until I was ready to dive deep into my options and ultimately buy the perfect pillows. And last weekend, when having the option of curbside pickup helped me find that last minute birthday present. These moments each require a distinct experience. I'm not just looking for product information. The type of info I need varies based on the product category, how I want to purchase it, and where I am in my decision making. To help merchants get discovered in each of these moments, we need to build curated, immersive experiences tailored to shoppers' specific needs. We just shared that with product feeds on discovery ads and video action campaigns, you can now highlight your most relevant products across Google and YouTube. There are more places than ever to get discovered. Year over year, searches for local businesses have grown by more than 80%, and searches for in-stock have grown globally by over 800%. Last year, we launched new ways for you to show customers which products are available in store and that you offer curbside pickup or in-store pickup, all in your business profile on search for free. With stores starting to open up, we're adding new ways for you to promote and highlight your in-store inventory through local inventory ads. You can now highlight products that are available for immediate store pickup, curbside pickup, and those available to pick up later. We're also extending curbside pickup and in-store shopping labels to YouTube and Maps ads and letting you highlight in-store products across more platforms so you can reach customers wherever they shop. These days, shoppers seek value. Searches for discount code have increased 50% since last year. And you've asked for more opportunities to showcase deals and connect with price-conscious shoppers. Later this year, we're launching our new deals results page on search and shopping. Shoppers can now easily discover the most popular deals for all their shopping needs throughout the year. These are just a few of the ways we're helping you connect with shoppers across their entire journey. The online shopping experience is a bit of a contradiction. 
shoppers want choice, but too much is also overwhelming. So it's important to build your brand and stand out. Help people understand who you are, what's your story, and why they should buy your products. That's why today we're excited to share how we're working on ways to help businesses enhance their brand presence across Google. 71% of consumers prefer to buy from companies that align with their values. To help shoppers do that, we want to share information that speaks to your brand's identity. We started that work earlier this year, indicating when a business identifies as a Black-owned business across Google Search and Maps. We'll expand these attributes on the Shopping tab to women-led and other e-commerce companies owned and led by underrepresented communities, enabling shoppers to buy from businesses and products they believe in. To keep those loyal customers engaged, we're launching a way to integrate your merchant loyalty program with Google. You can show your members their loyalty pricing and benefits and entice new people to join your program. While retail stores have been shuttered for much of 2020, people still want to be able to see a product in front of them or even see how it would look on them before purchasing. Last year, we launched an augmented reality experience to help people see what beauty products like lipstick and eyeshadow would look on people with a range of skin tones, or even virtually try it on yourself. We've been partnering with brands including L'Oreal, MAC Cosmetics, Black Opal, and Charlotte Tilbury to bring this to life. And soon, we'll be adding foundation to the AR makeup kit and roll this out globally. We're also building out a new apparel experience to see how clothes fit on a diverse set of people, too. Experiences such as these allow brands to more personally engage and connect with a vast and diverse set of shoppers out there and help them find the right products for them. We also understand how important it is for you to share what makes your business special, to share your story, we're experimenting with new ways to surface videos, lifestyle imagery, and rich story formats, in addition to your products and prices on Google. Here's a sneak peek. It's all about helping consumers learn more about your brand and products, and how you can reach consumers in an engaging and personal way. We want to give you the tools to curate how your brand appears to consumers and make it super easy to manage your content and products across Google products. More to come throughout the year, so stay tuned. I'm Greg Ravel, Chief Marketing Officer at Kohl's. Kohl's is a leading omnichannel retailer with more than 1,150 stores nationwide. With a bold vision to be the most trusted retailer of choice for the active and casual lifestyle, we offer our 65 million customers an accessible and aspirational brand portfolio, an industry-leading loyalty program, and a seamless shopping experience across our stores and online. Kohl's has been on an incredible journey these past few years, but 2020 was one of the most pivotal years in our history. As the COVID-19 pandemic escalated, we made the difficult decision to close our entire fleet of stores for several weeks, becoming a completely digital business overnight. In order to meet the needs of our customers, our digital channels had to work harder, and we work with our media partners, including Google, to help make that happen. With consumers staying home, the demand for much of our mainstay apparel shifted. So our in-house media team worked with Google to automate and optimize our investment seamlessly into trending categories like athleisure, wellness, and home office, pivoting with consumer needs. Our ability to learn and shift investments quickly helped our brand stand out, increasing our digital sales and attracting new customers. With these new customers coming to Kohl's, we doubled down on our loyalty program. Building on our strength in loyalty and value, we launched Kohl's Rewards, which is rooted in our customer favorite, Kohl's Cash. The refresh simplifies our rewards program, enriching it with personalized benefits, all focused on the Kohl's app. We believe Kohl's Rewards represents the very latest thinking in retail loyalty, simple, personalized, and rooted in a value proposition that is unique to Kohl's. Partners like Google have helped us to drive with more speed and agility, 
enabling us to provide our 30 million loyalty members with benefits tailored to them. Twenty twenty taught us that people rapidly change their purchasing behaviors to meet their current needs. We see this reflected on Google, where 15% of searches every day are brand new. We know that shopper insights are the lifeblood of your business and allow you to react quickly and make strategic decisions in real time. Google's unique understanding of what matters to consumers can enable your business for a digital transformation that drives results today while building long-term resilience and growth so you're ready for whatever comes next. Take M.M. LaFleur. During the pandemic, they leveraged Google's Insights page to monitor search queries. They noticed an uptick in searches for joggers and comfortable denim, so they renamed and refined relevant product descriptions in their line to match consumer demand. We're just getting started building better tools to deliver real-time, actionable insights that help you shop at the speed of culture. To reach that speed, understanding the efficiency of your marketing efforts is a huge advantage. Let's say you're checking a product's performance and notice it's gone up. This may seem like an area of value where you'd want to invest more marketing spend. But you also might wonder, is this product's performance really improving or was it an overall shift in the market? Our new competitive visibility report brings insights beyond your own performance so you can drill down into external factors like your competitor landscape and see how your share of voice compares to your competitors. From there, we present you with suggested actions. One of those might be to adjust pricing. Our recently launched price competitiveness report draws back the curtain on how other businesses are pricing similar products, showing which prices get clicks allowing you to be more competitive. We know that a tangible way of measuring value is through your conversions or products sold through Google. We're working on reporting that shows how your free listings are helping you drive more sales. By gleaning real-time signals from what shoppers are clicking on, how your competitors are pricing and performing, seasonality fluctuations and more, Google has given you a leg up like we did with ASOS. My name is Carolina Vicente, and I'm the Director of Media Investment at ASOS. ASOS's purpose is to give people the confidence to be whoever they want to be. We believe fashion thrives on individuality, and it should be fun for everyone. But last year with the pandemic, people's lives changed dramatically, and the role of fashion in their lives changed with it. This meant that we needed to adapt quickly to meet the changing needs of our customers. ASOS teamed up with Google to better understand how consumer needs were shifting. We used search to predict shopping trends by identifying the fastest rising and falling apparel categories. What we saw was a shift from occasion wear to casual wear, which let us know we needed to bring things like sweatshirts and loungewear to the forefront. These insights, coupled with Google's machine learning and automation, helped us scale our reach to the right customers across the globe. For example, we use the smart bidding and targeting capability of video action campaigns and discovery campaigns to reach new customers and re-engage our existing customers with content around what we knew shoppers were looking for across Google services. As a result, we achieved double-digit conversion increases. While we don't always know what the future will bring, having a partner like Google makes us more confident that we'll have the insights and the tools to respond to our customers' needs and can continue to make fashion fun for everyone. As Jerry mentioned, trust is key to customer relationships in a cookie-free future. We can create great, privacy-safe experiences for people while helping your business reach shoppers and achieve your goals. For us, it's about investing in practices that ensure a safe shopping experience, which is why we have policies against selling products that enable violence. We also want to ensure shoppers are kept safe while browsing or buying online, so we take into account secure checkout flows and clear return policies. When shopping on Google and with you, customers know they're going to have a high quality, safe experience. We also know policies can cause friction and frustration in your experience on Merchant Center. That's why my team is investing in solutions that provide clear, actionable insights into policy violations with recommendations on how to fix the issue 
as well as tailored troubleshooting resources to keep your products up and running. To make it easier for people to shop your business on Google, we're bringing all buying options together in a cohesive experience anytime they connect with your product on a Google surface. Whether they visit your e-commerce site, buy on Google, or visit your store down the street. Shoppers get to see everything you have to offer in one place to pick the buying option that makes most sense for them. We're currently testing this experience on Search and the Shopping tab and plan to bring them to additional surfaces like YouTube and Images later this year. And if you're anything like me, I put products I'm shopping for in carts and end up with a ton of open tabs that are hard to keep track of. Now, you'll be able to see your open carts in one place when you open a new tab in Chrome, plus any discounts the retailer may be offering. And more, we're happy to announce that merchants on WooCommerce, GoDaddy, and Square will soon have access to the same 10-minute integration to get on Google to sell for free, helping even more businesses get started and reach more customers. These are just some of the exciting innovations my team has planned for 2021. We're excited to partner with you on this journey. Our goal at Google is to help shoppers find what they're after and let businesses thrive by connecting the two. To achieve that, we're focused on four things. Building an open ecosystem where merchants of all sizes can grow their business. Helping you reach shoppers at the right decision-making moments across their journey. Building experiences that let you tell your brand story and gain fans who will come back to share in it again and again. And helping businesses like yours take real-time action on consumer insights. From shopping to advertising to measurement, all of us at Google are building toward a future with privacy-safe technologies designed to deliver results. And hopefully, after hearing about our plans, you're ready to market for today while preparing for tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to charting a course forward together with you. Hello, I'm Alan Tegelson, President for the Americas at Google, and I hope you've been enjoying the incredible program we've put together. You just heard about how our products and features can help you be ready for what's next. And in just a minute, we're going to open things up for a conversation with digital leaders who are doing just that. But first, I want to point out that this year, we've made it easier than ever for you to choose an experience tailored to your interests, your needs, and your reality. That's exactly what many of you have done for your customers every day over the last 15 months. It's what we do as marketers. And it's never been more important because the world has shifted under our feet since March of 2020. We're still in a period of uncertainty and it's going to continue for some time. So that poses a fundamental challenge to every marketer. How can we drive results for today and build resilience for tomorrow, when tomorrow is harder to predict than it's ever been? If you take just one thing away from our program today, I hope it's this. You don't have to choose between solving for the success of your business today or for success over the long term. Because the things that best position you for success today are the very same things that will set your business up for success tomorrow. It starts with being privacy safe, because protecting consumer privacy is how we earn the right to be invited into their lives. Once we've earned that privilege, we have to respect their time. We can do that by being insights-led, by demonstrating every single time we interact with people that we understand and can help meet their needs. The key to understanding those needs is found in consumer behavior that's changing faster than it ever has before. And to pivot at the speed of consumers in real time and at scale, you have to be agile in the way that only automation can enable. That kind of agility is only possible if your business is data-driven so you can see and measure what's happening across your business. And lastly, building a team that's digitally adept with the right skill sets and capabilities is the single best way to drive results today and to future-proof your business. The good news is you don't have to take the five steps I've just outlined all at once, because the kind of digital transformation I'm describing doesn't have to be a big, expensive project. It can and should be an organic value-adding process. It's a process you can undertake and start to see real results almost immediately 
while building the kind of resilience your business needs to succeed over the long haul. So to dive deeper into this, I'm going to ask an expert in transformational change to join me to talk about how he's partnering with Google to help Ford be ready for the car buyer of tomorrow. Later, my colleague Celine Song will be joined by Elf Beauty's CMO and Keys Soul Care President, Corey Machisoto, and Alicia Keys, award-winning music artist, author, and founder of Keys Soul Care. They'll discuss how brands can leverage innovation and creativity to drive growth in the face of challenges and uncertainty. Hi, Jim. Thanks for joining us. Now, there's really no better person to talk about modernizing business and profound transformation than you. So let's get right into it. Business transformation has been a buzzword for years now, but last year's events really accelerated the urgency around agility and transformation. Now, you've been an auto industry transformation advocate for years. Why has it been such an important priority for you? I think now the transformation, Alan, is a basic requirement for the going concern of an enterprise like Ford. It's only recently become clear that survival for a company like Ford requires transformation. Transformation here really means modernizing, but also disrupting our operations. I mean, there's clearly not a one-size-fits-all approach to transformation. As a Fortune 10 company, what does transformation at Ford look like? you talk to us about any unique challenges or opportunities that you have run into as a, as a brand with 190,000 employees and offices in 125 countries around the world? I'd say universal to the industry is the move to a digital product, including electrification, is a huge change. The modernization of our company is to move to an always-on relationship with the customer, where we can change the product dynamically with software and that the customer relationship is not episodic, it's every day. To do that, we need to vertically integrate a lot of know-how that we've never had to do for 100 years. You know, we've never really thought of always on, digital, software-enabled services, using the data off the vehicle uh, for a quality loop. All that is really new. What's unique to Ford and our transformation is really our commercial vehicle lineup, our passion products. You know, we're the kind of company that can do Broncos and Super Duties and Mustangs, even electric ones, and they'll feel really different than our competitors. So we need to lean into those real passion products. And the last one is going to per mile basis, which is really also different. It's kind of the ultimate disruption. And it really disrupts Henry's original idea of personal ownership of vehicle. We have to execute in a way that others haven't so far. I, I would say the last two are really unique to Ford. In February, you announced a strategic partnership with Google to elevate the automotive industry and to reinvent the connected car experience. So can you share what excites you the most about this partnership? Initially, it was that Google was really serious about building a experience platform for the inside of the vehicle that would be super competitive for customers, better than what we do today. We have huge data sets from uh, you know, millions of vehicles that are now connected. We have to analyze that, make use of them for our customers, and your cloud services are really a great tool to do that. We're applying AI inside the car, in our industrial system and manufacturing supply chain, and having access to the best AI thinkers in the world. Now, I know from our meetings that you've got a you know, great affinity for and understanding of marketing. What do you see as the role marketing can play to deliver against your goals of delivering a superior customer experience and deepening customer loyalty? What would transformation look like on the marketing side? That's a really good question. I think the real big transition for us as a company and our industry is we have to stop being obsessed with conquest. And we have to start putting all of our resources on taking care of the customers that already love the brand and own our product. And this is a fundamental shift. There's a new model that's available because of this digital relationship with the customer, because the product is digital now uh, with ownership experiences. Now, transformation is an ongoing process. Where do you see for taking it next? Well, as I said, you know, we're just beginning the process with a digital product that's connected all the time. Um, and that's going to be a big change for us. Probably the biggest is going to be to a software services dominated company and brand. Um, I think that's going to take a long time. Right now, I would say we're kind of in the first inning of nine in our transformation. Um, general management will help our team get more focused. 
But the big change is definitely going to be the software talent and know-how, uh, really enabling a whole different um, experience for our customers. And that organization change will be the biggest and potentially the most difficult for the organization. How are your uh, your C-suite colleagues? You, know, you have a full team there, the, the CFO and the CMO, for example. How do they play a unique role in contributing to your company-wide transformation goals? Uh, both the CFO and the CMO are new, my management team. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, the chief marketing officer, uh, Susie, we really wanted someone who had a deep service experience. The best metaphor for the transformation of our industry is probably mobile. Um, and so a marketer who really knows services and that loyalty play uh, is very important to me. So I think we have the right team, but it's uh, very different skills. You've been a fantastic partner to Google, and I think we can't wait to take the relationship to the next level with the, the new partnership um, and uh, to you know, make Ford even more relevant for the next 100 uh, years. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Alan. Hello to everyone joining us from around the world. I'm Celine Song, Vice President of Google Customer Solutions in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. My team works with thousands of businesses to help them succeed online. And this past year, our partnership has taken on new meaning. As COVID-19 disrupted consumer behavior, we worked through these shifts with our advertisers and innovated together as we found new ways to reach customers. Today, we'll dive into a business who has leveraged their agile culture and digital infrastructure to succeed. In a year when retail e-commerce sales grew by nearly 28% worldwide, as shoppers can no longer touch, feel, and directly experience products, Elf Beauty quickly pivoted and found new ways to connect with customers. They even launched a new brand, Key Soul Care, during this time. We're thrilled to be joined by CMO of Elf Beauty and president of Key Soul Care, Corey Marchisoto, and award-winning artist and Key Soul Care founder, Alicia Keys. Thank you both for being here today. I guess the first question is for Corey. Corey, you lovingly refer to Elf as the OG digital disruptor. And it's probably enabled you to do things during the pandemic that a lot of people thought was impossible. To what do you attribute your team's success and ability to pivot so quickly? To crystallize this for you, let me boil it down to four fundamental elements that I would call our rocket fuel. Mm -hmm. The first is we water the roots of digital disruption every single day. Elf was born to disrupt. It's in our DNA. We've been making the impossible possible for over 16 years. The second is we create the cultural conditions necessary for constant in innovation. And that starts with a mindset. The mindset inside the walls of Elf is anything is Elfing possible. <laughs> and we have a renegade spirit. We have a bias for action. We have a team of superheroes on board a rocket ship that are agile and always ready to pivot. And probably the thing I love most about ELF is we're big enough to do great things, but small enough to be nimble. Mm. The third thing is we have our ear to the ground. We have a relentless focus on the needs, wants, and desires of our community. We're committed to not only listening, but fostering deep relationships and making sure that all of our action plans are built on the backs of consumer insights. And the fourth and, and, and probably the biggest sun that radiates the most warmth in our sky is that we put purpose at the center of everything we do. Elf is a bold disruptor with a kind heart. We're committed every day to inclusive, accessible, and cruelty-free beauty. Really, the combination of these elements, disruption, innovation, culture, community obsessed and purpose driven at the center that really allowed us to thrive before the pandemic and to enter the pandemic from a position of strength. Now, if you couple that with Alicia's spirit, her essence, 
and her vibe, that's the rocket fuel that allowed us to create and launch Key Soul Care during the pandemic. Alicia, even with ELF's partnership, building a brand from scratch is just no small feat, especially in an industry that's 100 years old. What motivated you to start Key Soul Care and what were you hoping to bring to this established industry? This concept of soul care, you know, having this idea that we have nail, nail care and hair care and air care and skin care, and we have all these cares, but there's never been any talk about soul care. And the day that we landed on that, um, we just knew that it, was, it resonated so beautifully. And this idea of connecting with rituals and things that you can do for yourself on a daily basis. And then these offerings that we have are the vehicle from which you can um, be reminded to choose yourself. So to do that in such a short period of time is definitely, I know for a fact that that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have Elf as a partner. Under a year is almost like, I don't, I don't think that's, I might not have ever been done. And that's not because it was done without care and thought. It's because there was so much connected um, perspective and kindredness and um, purpose and ideals that were shared that we were able to zoom in a way that just felt natural. That is incredible to hear and so inspiring. Corey, you are known for your out of the box thinking and Alicia, you are an artist at heart. How do you ensure that your creative vision really comes to life in a digital world? The, the starting point is never digital. After you understand what, what is the human experience and what problem are we trying to solve, then we use technology to power that human experience, but never lose sight of the fact that it starts always and at the center radiating the human experience. And if you think about one of our most incredible launch moments and, and really the launch pad, it was the Key Soul Care Lounge. And that's where we use the power of technology to create this human immersion and this deep dive into the essence and into the soul of Key Soul Care. When the whole pandemic started, I remember a friend called me and, and said, um, Alicia, I know you really like in person. You know, I know you like to do your shows and you like to see people in their face. And I know you like to be right there with everybody. But I just want you to know that don't be shy of the digital space because it's going to be really special for you. And at the time, I was a little shy. I was a little bit like, ah, but does it come? How does it come off? And I did start to open up to this digital relationship. And I think that brought us together in a, in a great way as the, as the great disruptors that ELF always has been, especially digitally. And me coming into my own in that world and being able to do it together felt super natural. And it was, you know, right on time. The pandemic has led to a number of unexpected changes, but the reality is that change is constant. Corey, how is the work that you've done this year going to inform your marketing strategy moving forward? I'm gonna boil it down into something that is super simple and really obvious and easy to say, but maybe not so easy to do. Double down on the stuff that's working and mm -hmm. let go of the stuff that isn't. Just let it go. Just let it go. So if I think about the stuff that's working that we're going to continue to double down on, the first is create real value for our growing communities. And we're going to continue to use technology to power the human experience. And as there are more tools available, we're con we'll continue to harness them to add value to people's lives and their journeys and, and to help them along their path. I think some of what you have said has really worked for, for, for us and obviously for ELF is this, this community and continuing to do what feels authentic to the community and resonates with the community. I just, I just love the, the camaraderie and the desire to really allow it to be everybody's journey, you know, and that is what I think is special. So it, and, it, and it doesn't just get stuck on one person. It's our journey. All right, to close, I'd like to ask you both to look forward. Based on what you've learned over the past year, what is your top tip for brand leaders as they navigate into the future? My top tip is just be honest. 
You know what I mean? Be be genuine. Be for real. Like like I know as a, just a human being, I can tell when people are selling me stuff. I don't want to be sold to. I don't want to be marketed to. I don't want to be told what to like. I don't want to be told what to do. I want it to feel like people are really conscious of what's going on around them, what's happening to all of us, where we all are in our you know, growth, all of us, because I think that's something we've been able to see this year so well, that we actually had a collective growth spurt. And so I would say that's the best way to connect and that's the best way to disrupt because you're actually just doing the, 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 the most important thing, which is like honesty. Like who would have ever thought that honesty and real truth could be at the forefront. And I feel like we're at that time now where that's what we're looking for. You know, another perfect example of exactly why we call her our goddess in chief. Um, so I'm going to boil it down to what I call the three C's. The three C's are curiosity, courage, and conviction. So why curiosity? You have to have a voracious appetite for listening and learning. Expand your horizons and most importantly, Spend most of your time with what you don't know. Second is courage. Be bold enough to think without borders, without boundaries. The first day we met Alicia, she challenged us to reach for the highest vision. That's a very powerful mission, reach for the highest vision. And that means see beyond yourself, see beyond your role, see beyond your in industry, find the magic that happens at the intersection. And if you spend most of your time outside of your comfort zone, you're going to find yourself blazing new trails. Mm -hmm. And the third part is conviction. Why conviction, right? Because you could have curiosity and learn all these great things and, and courage to carry them forward. But if you don't have conviction, you won't be able to carry it all the way through to the end. Because the path from idea to execution, it's not linear. It is not linear. It is long. It is winding. It's filled with roadblocks and hurdles and speed bumps. So to carry your idea and action plan, you have to have a relentless conviction and don't let anyone dim your light or tell you you can't. And if they tell you you can't, let that be the fuel that you need to show them that you can. Yes. Love that. <laughs> Period. Mic drop, that was wonderful, thank you. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Angela Corton and I'm the Vice President of YouTube Brand Marketing. You've heard from our product experts and top customers today. As we conclude, we wanted to create a space for an equally important discussion around uncomfortable conversations. 2020 was a year that forced the world to reckon with the structural and systemic racism that communities of color have experienced over generations. More recently, we've seen a rise in anti-Asian violence across the US as well. In response, Google searched for answers within its own walls and announced several company-wide commitments to racial equity, which included increasing representation and retention of members of the black community and establishing a range of anti-racism educational programs. That's why I'm thrilled to be moderating today's discussion with Emmanuel Acho to speak to the importance of open and uncomfortable conversations and how brands can be ready to show up authentically for employees and customers. Now you may know Emmanuel from his YouTube channel where he is the host and producer of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, more recently as the host of The Bachelors After the Final Rose Ceremony, or from his four years as a linebacker in the NFL where he played for the Cleveland Browns, Philadelphia Eagles, and New York Giants. Emmanuel, thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to be speaking with a fellow Texan and someone who's been part of two of my favorite franchises, the NFL and The Bachelor. I know I just gave a very quick overview, but you've had a storied career, and I'd like to hear about your journey from the NFL to YouTube to where you are now. Well, Angela, here's the first question. What franchise do you more prefer, the NFL or The Bachelor? I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, so I'm going to say the NFL through and through. <laughs> I love it. Um, I played in the National Football League. But before that, because that's truly irrelevant without what came prior, I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. I went to an affluent, all boys, predominantly white college preparatory school. And then you play college football 
in Texas, and then you go on to play in the NFL. So Angela, my upbringing, it had me immersed in white culture in, in, in middle school and high school, but then also immersed in black culture playing in the NFL, which is roughly 77 to 75% black. Why is that relevant? Why does that matter? Because I was first generation American. My parents born in Nigeria. So they came to America with a blank canvas as far as all these conversations regarding race. And then I had white culture painted on to my mind, being immersed in this predominantly white school, then black culture painted on to the canvas of my mind. And so now I'm kind of fully um, um, literate, if you will, in black culture and white culture, all the while being Nigerian cultured, uh, meaning I'm listening to Nigerian music growing up, eating Nigerian foods, etc. cetera. Um, and then uncomfortable conversations with the black man begins and it emerges. Angela, so many people ask me, Emmanuel, what was your inspiration behind uncomfortable conversations with a black man? And I very somberly respond, there wasn't an inspiration, there was a devastation. I was devastated to creating uncomfortable conversations with a black man. After the murder of George Floyd, literally a, a year ago, I was like, what do I do? do? I was weeping in my house in Austin, Texas. Didn't know if I should scream, if I should cry, if I should vent. I didn't know what to do. And Angela, I realized my voice is my sword. We rented an all white room space and I sat in a chair for nine minutes, 27 seconds, like I'm sitting in this chair, looking dead into the center of this camera. And I just poured out my heart. And within uh, five days, we had like 25 million views and the rest was history. Yeah, it's fascinating. I, I've actually spent time on your channel and I was struck by the first episode, which was really so heartfelt. And then you took on two other Texans for episodes two and three <laughs> to talk about these conversations. So, um, I mean, honestly, I'm so glad you found a home on YouTube where you can bring these stories to our platform and our community. Yeah, Angela, I've realized that well, one, there are so many incredible mediums in which we can reach this world. And I don't like complaining about an issue if I'm doing nothing to fix it. And so I realized, wait a second, YouTube has been an incredible medium by which I can amplify content, true, genuine content, by which I can amplify, amplify empathy. The only way you can achieve empathy is through understanding. And the fact of the matter is, so many people don't know what they don't know. Yeah, you know, it's such a great point because, you know, if you think about our audience today, you've got a bunch of storytellers who are in the business of ads and marketing. And, you know, I think about like, what do you think about when you craft a great story? And maybe it is intention. Like, what do you do to make them powerful? And obviously, where do you think storytellers go wrong? I clap for really good questions. Where storytellers go wrong is that they all look at the same thing through one vantage point. So they're only telling the story through their own lens. And storytellers have to do a better job of saying, hey, how do you see this? Hey, how do you see this? Hey, how do you see this? And, and trying to fully encapsulate the totality of the story. If you're talking about any story, there's my truth, there's Angela's truth, and there's the truth. There's typically three sides to every story. So when you're trying to tell a story, how I've done it with uncomfortable conversations with a black man, I know the black perspective because I am black. I understand the white perspective because I have been immersed in white culture. So storytellers, if you aren't yourself immersed in variety, immersed in versatility, then make sure you have a team around you that is immersed in that. So what can storytellers do? Diversify the lenses from which they tell the story and make sure the height of the story is potent. Well, I, I love that. You know, switching gears a little bit and maybe taking on a more serious tone to what you've been delivering since you were moved by George Floyd's murder, you know, last month we saw justice was delivered by the courts in Minneapolis over his murder. This week was the one year anniversary of his tragic loss of life. The conversation that moment sparked about systemic racism, inequity and racial violence has had a worldwide significance. 
We've also seen an acceleration of commitments from companies when it comes to advancing racial justice. As someone that has worked across multiple industries, what guidance would you give brands trying to find their authentic voice in this space for their customers and their employees? Well, let's go back a month in time if we can. I vividly remember hearing a quote after that trial, and it said that justice implies true restoration. Mm. What we saw with the decision of, of the, after the George Floyd murder was accountability. Right. Now, accountability is a first step toward justice, but justice implies true restoration, which we can't get particularly in the tragedy of George Floyd. However, accountability is that first step. As for non-performative actions, we have to be very, very, very cognizant of our why. When I first got on the phone with Oprah after the first episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, Angela, she calls me. She's sitting in her kitchen and she asked me this one question, which I will ask you, Angela, but it's really for every company to ask themselves. She said this, what is your intention? Hmm. I said, Oprah, my intention is to change the world and I truly believe that I can. So what I will implore every company to do is Ask yourself, what is your intention? If we navigate life without intentions, then we will navigate a meaningless life. If we navigate business without intentions, then we will navigate a meaningless business. It's easy to be successful. It is hard to be significant. So I just ask every individual and every company to challenge themselves before making a statement, before joining in the fight, before starting an initiative, ask yourself, what is your intention and choose significance over success when at all possible? I really want to thank you, Emmanuel. I mean, it's, it's, I guess it's, it shouldn't be as rare that people are struck by something and then motivated to do something. And I'm really inspired by you. I'm like enlightened and I love your program. I have watched it with my daughter. I feel like we're so we're so blessed to have you on the platform. We're obviously so blessed to have you here and to experience, you know, your intention and your significance. And, you know, obviously for those of you who haven't seen his work on uncomfortable conversations with a black man, I encourage you and urge you to check it out on his YouTube channel. Emmanuel, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure and I look forward to what you have yet to come. Thank you. Angela, thank you. Thank you for joining us for Google Marketing Livestream. We're just getting started. So be sure to stay tuned for more sessions to help you be ready for what's next. And you can always learn more about today's announcements on the Google Ads blog and on Ads on Air.